The ANSI log with limits takes in a value from a short range of numbers and non-linearly scales it to the 0 to 65 535 range. The ANSI log with limits uses the speed key A log L and can also be added to your program by expanding the analog operations folder under logic symbols and then clicking and dragging the ANSI log with limits over to the detail view. So the ANSI log with limits takes in values between the lower limit and upper limit parameters. And then it places a value between 0 to 65 535 on the output of the symbol. So unlike the log with limits, the parameters of the ANSI log tell the symbol the range of numbers it can expect to receive on its input, as opposed to its output, which is what the log does. And when working with the ANSI log with limits, the lower limit and the upper limit cannot be zero, which means that the symbol can accept an input value that's any number except zero. And the output of an ANSI log scaler will always be greater than the output of an analog scaler with the same upper and lower limit, except at the endpoints. Let's build a quick example program, that way I can show you what I mean. I'm just going to add two analog scalers with I.O. limits. The first one is going to take the output of a slider on the X panel and scale it down to the 100 to 500 range. The output of this scaler is going to feed the inputs of the anti-log and the second scaler as well as one of the analog feedbacks on the X panel. The anti-log's upper and lower limits will be 500D and 100D and then its output will be fed to the X panel. And the second scaler is going to scale the 100D to 500D range up to 0D to 65535. And the output of this scaler will also go to the X panel. So that's it, let's compile and upload to our processor. When the program boots up, all analog outputs are initialized to zero. But once we start moving the slider around, we see some magic happening. Once we get past the lower limit, the anti-logs output stays well above the analog scalers, but the two values catch up to each other when the slider reaches its maximum value, which is the upper limit that we prescribed. Then while we ramp the input value down from 500D to 100, the anti-logs output is still higher than the scalers, and the two eventually catch up with each other when the slider reaches 100 decimal. So when can you use the anti-log with limits? The easiest example is a speaker that takes a long time to get up to its maximum volume level. If you put an anti-log into the mix, it'll help make the speaker's output reach a maximum value at a more constant rate. And technically, you should also be able to perform multiplication on multiple analog signals by coupling the anti-log and log symbols together. But being limited to integer values on the outputs sometimes makes the products incorrect. In addition to the sample program, we've included another that demonstrates multiplication using the log and anti-log symbols. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give us a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see something else in our videos, leave us a comment below or on our Twitter or Facebook or Tumblr or Instagram pages. Maybe MySpace. We might have a MySpace.